If you're watching this video, it unfortunately means that you are taking Lupron or your doctor is telling you to consider taking Lupron or maybe you have um, endometriosis and you've been reading about Lupron as a treatment or maybe you took Lupron years ago or you're just coming off it and you're still feeling the side effects. Basically, you feel like shit and you want to know when it's going to be over. As somebody that had endometriosis and had surgery and had Lupron injections, I do follow um, a lot of pages and message boards that talk about endometriosis, that talk about Lupron. I'm not here to praise Lupron at all. I know it is it, a terrible drug. It's essentially a poison and it ruins the lives of so many people that have had to take it. But I somehow bounced back from Lupron. I don't have any of the long-term side effects that I see people talking about. Even years after coming off of Lupron, people are still complaining about pain. I know everybody is different. I know everybody's body is different. I just want to talk about how I approached Lupron, the things I did while I was on Lupron, and how I think the things that I did might help you. So the first thing, number one thing, right off the bat, Lupron does not cure endometriosis at all. It doesn't. A lot of doctors try to tell you, oh, if you take Lupron, your endometriosis will go away. It doesn't. You won't have your endometriosis pain because you won't be bleeding. You won't be having your periods. Lupron ceases all estrogen. So you essentially go into menopause. If any of you had menopausal mothers, you always hear them complaining about hot flashes, insomnia, cold flushes, a really foggy brain, joint pain, fatigue, depression, because a plummet in hormones can cause depression. So you're essentially going to feel all of those things while you're on Lupron. The only difference is when you go on Lupron, it's an overnight crash. Your hormones are plummeting over the course of a couple of days when at least when you're naturally going through menopause later, it's a slower decline and you can kind of sort of adjust a little bit, but Lupron is, it's essentially getting hit by a bus of menopause. So you can have endometriosis and be on Lupron and not feel pain because you're not bleeding, but once you stop taking Lupron and you get your periods back, you're probably going to have that same endometriosis pain again. So Lupron is just a temporary band-aid. It treats the symptoms, it treats the pain while you're on it, but it does not cure it. And a lot of people will say it's not even worth it because you feel so shitty while you're on Lupron anyway. So which is worse, having really debilitating periods, you know, for however many days out of the month or feeling like shit every day of the month for every month that you're on it. In my case, it was a little different. I had surgery to remove the endometriosis. And my doctor, and who was also my surgeon, said, I want to put you on Lupron for six months after the surgery so that you have no hormonal, you know, action happening while you're recovering because he said my, my endometriosis had expanded so much that my ovaries and my fallopian tubes and my uterus were all kind of like crumpled up like, like little crumpled balloons. And he said that by stopping all hormonal activity would give my organs a chance to rest and recover and like return to normal and like uncrumple and kind of find their way back to where they should be. So I agreed to it, but I immediately started researching about it just because I knew off the bat that it would induce menopause and I wanted to learn as much as I could about what happens when you artificially induce menopause with a drug. And it was through that research that I found out that it was causing all these terrible long-term side effects and people complaining of joint pain and things like that. And you would think that that would deter me and make me change my mind and say no. But um, upon doing even more and more research, I found out that there were things you could do to help fortify your body, to keep your bones and your joints healthy even while you were taking the Lupron. And a lot of the people that were on these message boards and pages complaining about how Lupron ruined their lives, they didn't do this research. And their doctors also didn't tell them about things that you can do to protect your body even while you're on Lupron. So again, the, the biggest complaint I see everywhere is pain, joint pain. The number one thing that I learned that doctors don't even tell you, estrogen is a hormone that fortifies your bones. 
Estrogen is the thing that keeps your bones strong, your muscles strong, your joints lubricated. This is why when people go into menopause, you know, naturally, even later in life, that's why they're more prone to bone fractures and bone loss and brittle bones and aches and pains and getting stiff. Estrogen is the thing that makes your joints and your bones feel good. So if you're on Lupron and you have no estrogen, you have to kind of figure out other ways to help keep your body and your bones specifically very strong. And there are a few ways to do that, and I tried to do all of those things. Number one is vitamins. You need to take copious amounts of calcium, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and magnesium. These are all the things that help your bones and your joints. Uh, calcium and vitamin D work very well, but you also need magnesium. Um, a lot of people are walking around with a magnesium deficiency and they don't even realize it. Magnesium and calcium are kind of buddies. They, they're, they're partners. They balance each other out. If you're taking a lot of calcium and not enough magnesium, you might not necessarily be absorbing all that calcium. And there were actually some studies that found that magnesium really kind of does more for your joints than calcium alone. The calcium isn't going to be doing as much as you think it's doing unless you take the magnesium with it. And the omega-3 fatty acids is, of course, good for your joints. That's like a, a lubricant for your joints. It, it kind of helps keep the stiffness at bay. Number two is diet. I went vegan halfway through my Lupron treatment. It, I didn't go vegan because I was on Lupron. It was kind of coincidental that I just started learning about plant-based diets and learning about the ethical reasons behind veganism. While I was on Lupron, I was feeling pretty crappy and just watching Netflix and watching documentaries. So I saw Forks Over Knives, and that was really what, what triggered it for me. So I was on Lupron for six months, and I want to say it was like three months in. Yeah, two or three months in, I went vegan. And what I learned when I was learning about plant-based diets and vegan foods was that animal products, meat, and dairy are acidic when they're in the body and they cause more inflammation and your body doesn't like that. It makes your pH more acidic and those things alone can make your muscles feel sore. When your pH is too acidic it takes calcium from your bones so you may be stacking up on like cheese and yogurt and milk uh, thinking you're getting your calcium and like eating lots of meat thinking that the protein from animal products is going to help your body be stronger and recover faster but it's actually the opposite. Plants have protein and plants have calcium. In fact there are some plants that have more protein per ounce than meat and there are some plants that have more calcium per ounce than milk does. I 100% believe that going vegan halfway through my treatment is what helped my body bounce back and helped resist all of those side effects from Lupron. I'm not saying I felt great. While I was on Lupron, I still felt like shit. I still was depressed. All I wanted to do was lay down, but I did notice a significant difference when I stopped taking it. I got my period literally the next month. A lot of people are complaining that they stopped Lupron, they didn't get their period again until another year or two years or it's been five years and they still feel exactly the same as when they were on Lupron, I felt the difference. When I stopped taking it and I started menstruating again, I I noticed all the other things start to feel more normal, like my energy and my sleep schedule, I didn't get the hot flashes anymore, and my body felt a little better. The third thing, the third best thing you can do while you're on Lupron and you want to prevent the joint pain and the, the long-term side effects is exercise. I know it's the last thing you feel like doing when you're on Lupron, but exercising and moving is better than not moving at all. You make your bones stronger when you move them. You make your muscles stronger when you move them. You keep your joints more lubricated just by moving them. The only thing worse than moving is not moving. And this is not specific to Lupron. This applies even when you get older and you naturally approach menopause and, and your hormones naturally start to decrease over time. When you get off arthritis, you get stiff, right? Things kind of lock up in place. You're like the tin man without his oil can. But just by moving, you have these little bursa, like little fluid sacs in your joints, and just by moving, you're lubricating your joints. By stretching, you're stretching your muscles and you're making your bones stronger. When people go to the gym and do like weight lifting and weight bearing things, they're actually increasing bone density. They're making their 
anatomy, their skeleton, their muscular system stronger by working out. And I know it sucks, and I'm not going to lie. I felt miserable and tired and I didn't want to move. But I think the one thing that I had going for me is that um, I'm a ballet dancer and we dance every day or almost every day. And it's just so much a part of our lives. We do it without question, like no matter what else is going on with our lives. You know, it's like, it's like brushing your teeth. It's like breathing. It's just something you do every day, no matter how shitty you're feeling. So ballet was just part of my day and I went and I did it, maybe even out of habit. And there were days where I did feel crappy and I couldn't even make it through a whole technique class. I couldn't make it through a whole rehearsal. There were days that I missed auditions. You know, there were days I had to sit down too. But I think those three things, I think it was taking the vitamins that help fortify your bones, changing my diet, cutting out the acidic, you know, things that cause inflammation like animal products, and moving every day, even if I didn't want to, those were the three things that helped me bounce back from Lupron. If you don't take any of those steps, then yes, while you're on Lupron, you're going to lose bone density and your joints are gonna have more wear and tear, and you might even lose muscle mass. That's why you're still left with so much pain even after you're done with the Lupron treatment. So if this is something that you can do while you're on Lupron, it will help kind of prevent that long-term residual pain that everybody seems to be left with. I don't have any long-term side effects from being on Lupron. I might have gotten a little bit of arthritis in my ankle, but it's hard for me to say whether that's from being on Lupron or just from being a dancer because I ab abuse my ankles all the time. So again, I'm not praising Lupron. I just think that it is possible to have a normal, relatively painless life after Lupron if you take the proper precautions. So these are just the things that I did and, and I 100% believe this is why I'm like the one fluky person on the page reading all the comments wondering why they feel so much pain because I don't have any of that. So do your research, take vitamins, cut out dairy, cut out meat. The switching to plant-based or a vegan diet I know seems a little overwhelming and daunting. The only thing I can really do is recommend the documentaries that I saw that explained all of the nutritional benefits of having a plant-based diet and those two documentaries were um, Forks Over Knives. That's the biggest one that I want you to watch. And then there was one that was called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Drink lots of <laughs> green juices. I know the, the hippy-dippy like health food trend sounds annoying and ridiculous and it sounds like it's just a magic wand, but it really does help when you give your body the nutrients it needs to stay strong. Your body will thank you. Your body is a master of healing. That's literally what your body is designed to do. Just heal, keep you alive. You get a cut, it heals, you're fine. You break a bone, your body mends bones. How cool is that? But it can't heal itself if you don't give it the proper ingredients that it needs. Third thing, again, exercise, move. I know that might not feel doable, but even if it's just stretching every day, even if you like get a yoga DVD, even if you walk around the block, anything is better than just sitting there and getting rusty like the Tin Man. You need to move, even if you if you have a kid, if you have a cat, just pick it up a couple of times a day. I, I don't know what to tell you. You just have to move and that will also help your body. And these are things you can continue doing even after you're on Lupron. In fact, I encourage you to keep doing these things even after you're finished with Lupron. As you get older, even if you naturally approach menopause, you're going to start to feel shitty again. My mother is also a ballet dancer and an athlete and she has a lot of arthritis everywhere and she says every day the only thing worse than moving is not moving. It hurts her to move, but once you warm up and loosen things up, it feels better. If you don't move at all, it's just gonna keep getting stiffer and stiffer and tighter and tighter, and you're just gonna keep feeling more and more pain. So these are all the things that I did that helped me bounce back from Lupron. While I was on it, I felt like shit, but I've been off it for five years, and I feel like I was never on it. So I think it's, it's possible to take it and not have your life ruined by it. You just have to do the research and try to take into account what's happening on the inside of your body. So, good luck. <laughs>